I have to be honest, when I booked this cruise and itinerary and saw that we were heading to Roatan, I had one goal and that was to hug a sloth. But the day ended up being so much more. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewellcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now, if you are going to Roatown on a cruise, you might be wondering what to do for the day. Now, this was my third time going to Roatown and I have to be honest, the excursion and the activities that we did on this day were the best that we have done so far. Now, there are two ports that your cruise ship might be docking at. One of them is Mahogany Bay. We were at Mahogany Bay a few years ago when we did arrive on a Princess cruise ship. And the other port is Coxon Hole, which is closer to the town. Now, if you're on a Royal Caribbean cruise, Virgin cruise, Celebrity cruise, or even Norwegian cruise, it is likely that this is the port that you will dock at. Now, in this video, I'll take you along with us as we explore Roatan for the day, and I'll also share some tips and things that you'll want to know along the way. And if you're wondering what it's like to hug and hold a sloth, I will give you all of the details as well. Now, before I get started, I wanted to mention that if you like this video, if you find it helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give this video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let's get started. Now, our cruise ship arrived in Coxon Hole. Now, something you should be aware of when it comes to planning your day in Roatan is Roatan is a little bit less developed than some of the Eastern and Western Caribbean islands. So it probably is a good idea to not go off on your own and instead to book an excursion either privately or with the cruise line. Now, when you get off the cruise ship, you'll see souvenir shops, you'll see bars, you'll see restaurants, as well as some vendors for the shore excursions. Now, some of the popular things to do in Roatan, including heading over to West Bay Beach, snorkeling at Little French Key, zip lining, and heading over to the Monkey and Sloth Sanctuary. Now, the last time we were in Roatan, we decided to take a taxi or a shuttle over to West Bay Beach on our own. And that is definitely something that you can do, although I have a little bit of a warning about that. I'll share that with you a little bit later on in this video. Now, what we decided to do for this cruise is to book an excursion with a local vendor. This was actually an excursion that wasn't offered by our cruise line, which is why I decided to do this. Now, we actually booked with Victor Bowden Tours. I'll share a little bit of information about that with you, including one thing that I probably would have done differently. Something I should mention is this video isn't sponsored, but I know a lot of people do want to know that information. So we met our driver at the cruise terminal and then we headed over to the Monkey and Sloth Sanctuary. And being honest, this was really surprising to me. I didn't realize all of the different things that you were able to do in the sanctuary. So the first thing we did is we actually met one of the trainers or the guides at the sanctuary and he was able to show us around. We started off with a visit with the caption monkeys. They were so cute and so well-trained. They were actually eating off our heads. It was definitely a bit of a funny experience. I think that probably being with the monkeys was one of the things that we enjoyed most about our day. Now, the time that we spent at the sanctuary was I guess about an hour, maybe a little bit more. And it was really so much more interesting than I thought it was going to be. We really learned a lot of information about the different animals in Roatan and at the sanctuary. Now, just something to mention is the group tours are actually quite reasonable. However, we opted for a private tour. It was also very reasonable. I think it was $80 for three people plus the entry into any of the different sites, which really wasn't very expensive. But we did opt for that because we wanted to have flexibility with our time. And because we're also videotaping and filming, we thought that this was a better choice. Now, after visiting the monkeys, we got to visit with the parrots. Now, my husband happens to really like birds. He was just in his element, my son much less so. The one thing that you would never think about is the fact that the parrots, when they land on your head, they actually have these little claws and they kind of, well, you feel them digging into your head a little bit. That was a little bit weird, but it was definitely a fun experience. Now we were able to see different animals at the sanctuary, including even spider monkeys, which by the way, you cannot go into the cage with the spider monkeys. Apparently they really are very aggressive. Our trainer actually told us that he can only go in 
in like one person at a time. If more than one person goes in, they could get extremely aggressive. So that was something interesting to know, but we finally were able to go and see the sloth. And yes, we were able to hold a sloth. Now you might be wondering, what does a sloth feel like? What does a sloth smell like? I know I was wondering that too. So firstly, it actually didn't really smell bad. I thought it would smell worse than it did. It really didn't smell bad at all. The feeling of it though was, it was much less cuddly than you'd think, although it did really hold on to you in almost a similar way to a baby. It was strangely comforting, but the fur itself felt a little bit wiry. I wouldn't say like a porcupine, although I've never felt a porcupine, but definitely sort of wiry fur. And the sloths made no sounds at all when we were there. Now to see the sloths up close, something that surprised me a little bit is their nails or their claws. They are really, really long. Now, by the way, I never felt unsafe. The trainers were always there and close by and they seemed to have a good relationship with the animals. Now this was where having a private excursion was something a little bit nice because bigger groups, well, they had to wait a little bit longer before getting to hold the sloths. And because we were a private excursion, it seemed like we went a little bit quicker. Now, since we were doing a four or maybe a five hour tour, we were able to work out with our driver the things that we wanted to do. So of course the sanctuary and the sloths, well, that was really our priority. But some of the other things that we wanted to see was we wanted to spend the afternoon at West Bay Beach. And we did also want to see the chocolate shop and factory. Now I have to admit before we left the sanctuary, there was one thing that I regretted that I wished I would have done or known before I went. And that was the fact that there were other things to do at the sanctuary. So there was zip lining. It actually looked quite safe. So it was probably a place that I would consider zip lining. And the other thing was they had ATVs that you could ride. Now I was actually wearing, well, this dress. So that would really be a bad idea. I didn't really want to get super muddy. That's what was going to happen. So I just really wasn't well prepared for that, but I could have done that at the sanctuary. So I do think if you are looking at excursions, that might be something that you want to try. So from the sanctuary and heading over to West Bay Beach, we were able to stop at the chocolate factory and the chocolate shop. And we basically looked around, had a chance to hear a little bit about how the chocolate is made, have some tastings, and of course have the opportunity to buy some of the chocolates. Now, if you are looking for some interesting souvenirs to buy while you're in Roatan, right next to the chocolate factory and shop, you do have the Rusty Fish Craft Market. Now the Rusty Fish Craft Market says that they've made all of their items from recycled materials in Roatan, so that is something really interesting. Now it was a pretty hot day and by this point we were really ready to head toward the beach. Now along the way with our driver, he was able to give us some information about Roatan. For instance, the fact that Roatan has a population of about 95,000 residents. The currency is Lampiras, which actually has a value of 24 to one to the US dollar. However, there's no need to change your money for that currency. US dollars are taken happily. Now, something that you should know about West Bay Beach is it is, by the way, a very beautiful beach. However, even though West Bay Beach is actually free to enter, the resorts themselves are not free. So all of the areas in front of the beach area where you have all of the chairs, well, there is a cost to use them. So there usually is an entry fee of about 15 to $20 to enter any of these different resorts, use their chairs and facility. Now I mentioned this because it is important to be aware of if you do decide to go by taxi or shuttle. However, most of the time, if you book a tour that includes the beach, this will be included. Now in our case, because we booked a private tour that really was just the driving, the entry was not included. So we did pay $20 to go into the Henry Morgan Resort. Now this resort was recommended by our driver because it had a pool as well as access to the beach. Being honest, we never really stayed at the pool, but it was a nice enough resort. The one particularly good part is unfortunately it did start to rain. It really rained quite a lot. And what we did is there was a restaurant right at the resort. We were able to go quickly, get underneath some of the covering, order some food and a drink. That drink really was quite good. I think it was a bushwhacker. In any case, we did eat at the restaurant. We just had some chicken tenders and french fries, but we met some people that were sitting there and they had a very interesting fish plate. I will leave a photo for you to see. I don't think I would want to eat it, but they said it was really very good. Now, when it comes to West Bay Beach, I do have a little bit of a watch out and I don't like to be negative. However, the first time that I went there, I wish I would have known this because a lot of people are aware of this. There are a lot of vendors on West Bay Beach. So people that will want to sell you bracelets, people that will want to sell you t-shirts, people that will want to sell you towels, people that will want to braid your hair 
and give you massages. And you definitely can see this at a lot of different beaches in the Caribbean. However, it really does seem like they hassle you quite a lot at this beach, which is one of the benefits of getting those chairs in those resort areas is that the vendors are not allowed to cross over that line or rope. Now it really is such a beautiful beach and it does seem like the resort owners or maybe Roatan itself, it does seem like they're trying to maybe lessen this a little bit because unfortunately it is one of the small unpleasant things about the beach. Now thankfully it only rained for about an hour so we did have some time to enjoy the beach before we met our driver to head back to the cruise ship. Now please let me know if you've been to Roatan by cruise, maybe if you've even held a sloth or if you're going to be doing that on a future cruise and as well if you have any questions about Roatan please let me know down in the comments below as well. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Bye for now and happy cruising.